All right, welcome to the next episode of Big Little Business Podcast. With me today is a gentleman called Dave McCall from Platinum Travel Consultancy. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thanks. It's great to be on, Paul. Thanks for uh, having me. No, you're welcome. Thanks for joining us. So, Dave, um, for the listeners, could you just give us a bit of a background about yourself and how you got into doing what you're doing with the travel consultancy? Yeah, sure. Um, very, very long story short, if I can. I got a background of about 35 years B2B with uh, the construction industry. Travelled all around the world doing that. And um, we had that thing that happened, didn't we, all over the world with COVID where we were locked in, couldn't, yeah. couldn't go anywhere. Um, that was uh, kind of a bit of a wake-up call for me. I was working within the, the insurance sector. I quite like my job. And I love the people that I work with, but I've, I've found it a little bit samey. So it was kind of um, a really well-timed break. And I was jumping on Zoom. We all got to familiar with Zoom and how well it was sort of connecting people and such like. And a friend of mine started uh, um, a role at a, at a cryptocurrency business. And I've, I've been into things like Bitcoin and that for quite a while. And um, I jumped on a call with her, had a chat, invested into the project, made a few quid out of it. And then about six months after that, I connected with a guy called Gary. I've known Gary for quite a while. We went to different schools in, in, in Rayleigh. And he's doing what I'm going to be doing, or what I've just started to do, rather. He's been doing this for a few years. And we were talking about travel, how it works, and, and so on and so forth. So I looked at this, this franchise option back then, and... Uh, and I kind of put it to one side, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. And then two and a half years later, I started to really investigate into it because I've, I've been living in Malden now for, for the best part of 18 months, uh, uh, come, come over from Braintree. And I thought, I've got to do something because I was doing things a little bit part-time. So I was advising businesses and, and individuals how to use artificial intelligence, and then chat GPT come on the line and exploded. Everyone's trying to get their head around that. I'm very up with emerging technology. I've always liked things that are um, new and shiny and all the rest of it. But the thing I've loved above that is traveling. I'm lucky I've been to virtually every continent in the world. Mm -hmm. I've got lots lots of family in the States. I've been to Southeast Asia. Uh, for my 50th, I was in Australia and New Zealand. So I've done that. And I thought, would it be great if I could kind of talk to people about what they can do and try and dispel some of the, the, the myths and, and, and um, misinformation really about certain things like cruises and so on. And I'll, I'll discuss that um, later on with, with you. So I then went back by accident and found this advert on Facebook of all places. I'm not often on there. And I thought, I've got to look at this. It keeps cutting. There's, there's, there's something up there that's saying, this is for you. So I spoke to a few friends of mine that have known me for 40 plus years. And they, they all said, Look, right down the street, you've always been a consultant um, for travel. You've been around the world. You, yeah. you're, you're good with people. You're not scared of knocking on doors and all this sort of thing. So I thought, why not? And looked into it, did due diligence as you do. I, I'm, I'm not an analyst, but I like doing research and things like that. Like I know what I'm getting into. So went through it thoroughly, got to the end of the page and I thought, where do I sign up? And then I'm, I'm now on the journey next, um, at the time of recording, well, I've got some training that I've got to do. So once I've got the, the, the business up and running, which will be 8th, 9th, I'll be able to help people with the, their travel needs. And that, that's that's really it. So it's learning something else, but it's like anything. If you, if you consult with, it can be IT, it can be SaaS, it can be construction projects. Once you know what the thing does, and if you can break it down into like layman's terms, yeah. consultancy is consultancy. So uh, this is something I'm really, really, really passionate about, and obviously love doing. Yeah, but well, it's good. I mean, <clears throat> you're you're fortunate enough to have travelled the world. Um, so I'm going to ask a bit of a random one. So where's the, where's the nicest, best place you've been? I mean, it must right be places you could reel off. The I can't answer that because I'd be here all day and, and give you the reasons why. It's a toss-up between Italy, right. Thailand, Sri Lanka, and New Zealand, and I can't decide for which one I prefer. 
the downside to New Zealand, as far as I'm concerned, at my age, and the in- the other interests I've got, I like going to see concerts and shows and things like that. It's very remote. It's a long, long. I mean, it's three hours from Sydney for right. Auckland. That 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 far alone. So when we was there, we 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 flew out on Boxing Day, got to New got to New Zealand, saw New Year, and then the following day we flew over to Perth. So we was only there for five days, but it was superb. You know, Singapore's got its charm as well. I think everywhere's got something a bit special, yeah. and it's it's really all about what you want to do once you're there. Yeah, and that kind of leads into why I'm doing what I'm doing because. No, there's no right or wrong answers for travel. People have got reasons why they want to go to Benidorm with the kids, um, or why they want to do a river cruise or, you know, fly to the moon if that was possible, you know. Um, and I don't know. I, I suppose if I was pinned down and had to give an answer, it would probably be Italy because I've got kids in the UK. I've got a daughter who lives in Canada. I'm still in touch. So it's not like a terribly long flight. And as you're getting older... I know I'm finding this out. Certainly, my dad is because he's he's well travelled. The, the the requirements to fly or the desire to fly becomes a little bit less and less and less, and it also becomes more expensive because you no longer want to sit in the um, in in the sort of cheap cabin area, if you like. So, flying flying with the the likes of Ryanair and EasyJet and so on has its purpose. But as you go a bit further afield, and this is something I learned when I travelled around. When you get to go on a plane to Singapore, which is best part of a 13-hour flight, you understand why their economy is actually bigger than it would be on a standard plane. So these little anal bits that I've picked up, I like passing on. So this is another um, logic in it. But apologies if I ra- randomly no, run no, off. No, that's fine. I mean, I, I get that. that um, I mean, I'd, I'd love to travel more. The whole flying thing, I'm all right with flying. It's just being confined to a space for a period of time if you're going to go to yeah. a 13 hour flight i think i'm not very good at sitting still for more than an hour if i have to um so short flights are fine but, it, but being six foot two it's the leg space and you you cramped in and it's just they ram as many people in as, as possible to, in, in a, that size of plane which i understand the more seats the more money etc um but yeah, I think I've, I've been to Italy, a beautiful place. Um, very fortunate enough to go to the Amalfi Coast. Yeah, I was there, I was there uh, five, six years ago. It's lovely. Yeah, and it's one of those places I would highly recommend. You know, it's, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, so do you have like a a a an ideal client or is it is, is what your consultancy going to be for the the broader range of people those with families the elderly couples that might want a lovely cruise um adults that you know they haven't got they can get rid of the kids for a few days and they can go away on their own so it's like an adult owner i see lots of these adult only hotels and breaks that you know where you've got that environment where there's no kids so you can just kind of up, decompress and unwind and enjoy it without the hassle of the the kids running around the ideal client, is, is, again, is quite a tough one because if you think about it, everyone travels. Yeah. Now, I don't just do overseas holidays. I do stuff in the UK as well. So you, you, you touched on the flying scenario and there are alternatives to that. So what one can do, and there are products out there, you can get, if you can get to somewhere like Tilbury or, or Southampton, you can jump on a cruise ship and do basically what I've just been speaking about. And it's not as expensive as people think. And that's one of the misconceptions. Of course, one of the advantages of cruising, got no limit on luggage. Um, Like you say, you're six foot two. I'm not. I'm five eight. So I don't have the the height issue. I've probably got the other way, but uh, that's down by love of beer. But but when you're on a ship and you've got your own room, you know, they've got got shout, you know, obviously it's it's like taking your bedroom. You're on a floating hotel. So... They're, they're starting to become very, very popular. And that's actually the biggest growth in travel as we as we sit right, right at this moment right. because they're starting to become more affordable. I mean, I saw a deal recently. Um, the downside was you had to leave in two weeks, but it's 1,500 quid uh, from Barbados, flight included, for 14 nights. That's not that's not expensive. Wow. I've, been, I've been to Barbados a few times. I used to sell um, uh, uh, investment uh, stuff out there. And, you know, it's it's lovely. It's got perfect climate and everything else. 
Um, it's, it's massively busy, uh, but it's not cheap. And I paid more then for, than, than I would for that particular deal. And, and this is the stuff I'll have access to. So I could cater for a family of four, for argument's sake, that could, that the husband has a shutdown. So these might be teachers. So if you have two teachers, two kids, and it's summer holiday, most expensive time of the year for most people to go anywhere. Yeah. There was a deal I saw. It was 30 nights in Mauritius in a five-star hotel with concierge. It opened up. There was a golf course right next door. Green fees included, food, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was one thousand nine hundred ninety-five pound per person. Now, when you add that up, that's almost eight grand. And to people that they might think, "Wow, eight grand's a lot of money," but you might do double that when you go to Disney in, in Florida for a fortnight, same time. So there's there's always little bits and pieces that I can find. In fact, most of the products that we do, sixty percent of it. No, you can't find by doing a Google search. It's not. It's not there. So yeah. there's lots of packages and alternatives that we can um, we can provide because we work with uh, over 450 suppliers, and it gives us about 12 plus million options. So there's something for everyone. Yeah, and can they be tailored to suit the individual couple, family scenario, whatever yes. it is? Yes. Yeah. Exactly that. Um, my 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 philosophy is um, not to sell, but to literally sit down with a blank bit of paper and start writing what it is that we've got. We've all got different things. I'm I'm lucky enough to go to Egypt in a couple of weeks' time over Christmas. So when I'm there, I'm going to be doing a bit of snorkeling and uh, scuba diving, obviously lapping up the sun and all this sort of stuff. Um, that might not necessarily be someone else's bag. They might prefer to see. The, um, the pyramids or the Valley of the Kings. Where I am, I'm miles away from that. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot further south. Yeah. So having an idea, and because I've been there before, I can give them an understanding of, look, if you haven't been snorkeling uh, and you, you think the Barrier Reef is too far for you, have you looked at other alternatives like Thailand? It's pretty good there because I've done it there too. Or s sort of closer to time, Egypt, you know, it's less than six hours. Yeah. It's what they call a, uh, like a mid distance flight um and all these things come into play because the only thing i don't have um knowledge of is what their budget is and where they actually yeah. want to go and what they like doing so it's building that rapport yeah and i think if they have got an idea that they want to go to a certain place <clears throat> excuse me but you have um more budget friendly alternative options yeah. that they could go to a a a similar place but they're going to get more for their budget yeah it's nice that you you've got that knowledge you know you, you know but plus as well if you've traveled to these places you've got first-hand experience right and that's that's very important if, if someone who wants to know more about a resort or a, a, a place if you say actually i went there five six years ago it's beautiful i can recommend this or i can recommend that you know and that's super helpful for people it, it, it certainly is. I mean, I, I also do the likes of Jet2, Chewy, Coney, Virgin. I do all those packages as well. Um, there's people that, and I had a conversation with a friend of mine, and she said, look, I'm savvy enough to book it all individually. I know what I'm doing, et cetera, et cetera, which is fine. A disadvantage of that, though, is what happens if your flight's like or the hotels overbooked or so you've got all these different moving parts that you've got to stick together now if someone wants a tailor-made and another friend of mine who wants to do i think it's australia and, and new zealand what i did but she wants to go to lots of different locations she said she's gonna ask me to have a look at it for her the average person takes about eight hours per holiday to do their research due diligence and all the rest of it um, I'm sure they've got better things to do than that. Yeah. If they gave me a brief of what, what, what they're after, I can give them some suggestions and basically let them decide for which one they want, if, if at all. Um, they'll also visit, I think it's on average 38 different websites. Yeah. I didn't believe I didn't believe this. So, yeah, I didn't believe this. So I tried it and I actually visited 43. So you, you do because... And you're looking at price and, you you know, you, you come back in a minute, oh, no, it's gone. And you try something else and you, you actually end up booking something you don't really want because the one that you want is already sold out. So 
I can I can take that aggro and pain away from people and just say, look, leave it with me. Let me get something together. And this is very important. When you go and buy a house, it's very, very rare that you go to your bank to get a mortgage because the bank will sell you their products. This is the same when you go to travel agencies in the high street. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. The smarter thing to do would be to, in, in, in the housing situation, go to see a mortgage broker. Why? Because he's got, he, she's got access to whole of market. I'm the travel equivalent of that. But sure. the difference between me and a mortgage broker is I don't charge you a fee. So what I give is, is no, it doesn't cost you a penny for what I give. And what you pay for is what you'll see on the screen. Sure. How I get paid is through the travel businesses that, that I work with. Sure. It's exactly how they work with, with, with their high street stores. So yeah. I could do the same deal that Chewy did. Um, but the other the other great thing is it's me you deal with. You've got my phone number. You don't have that at Chewy. You, you'll have a branch number, but um, what happens if they're sharp? Yeah. I, I, I don't shut. I go to bed, obviously. But... Yeah. Or the person you're speaking yeah. with is on holiday yeah. or off yeah. Yeah. You, you, you can't WhatsApp any of these organisations because the, the, all right, there might be one or two that have got it now, but there's no individual there that you know, like, and trust that you pick up the phone and deal with. And um, I, I'm not knocking them. I've done lots of business with those those people in the in the, in the past and used them. You know, EasyJet, I've used them a few times with holidays, Ryanair with individual flights. Again, I can do all that. I can even do West End tickets. Um, sporting events like Formula One. I know the season's just finished, but I can do that as yeah. well. There's one on my radar. It's the, um, I think it's the Tyson Fury fight in, in Saudi next year. So I've got little bits and pieces like, yeah. like that that genuinely aren't available when you go and search. Yeah, sure. So, you know, your, your business is just launching. So how much of a challenge has that been for you? Well, I've always... I've always worked from home for the past goodness knows how long. So that bit's the easy part. Um, my my challenge is probably myself thinking, what if? What if it don't? What if it don't? But out of the, <laughs> out of the partnership between myself and the messes, I'm kind of like the strong one in terms of, yeah, yeah, yeah it'll be all right. You know, it's, it's, it's not a risk and this, that, and the other. Listen, everything we do in life is risk. But I've also had a lot of friends say, we, we can't wait for you to, 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 to open the doors as such because we're looking to use you. And um, I've, I've already got uh, a, a dozen or so inquiries that have loosely said, look, this is what we're looking to do. We just need you to give the heads up when, you, when you're up and running and such like, and we can sort of go from there. Because yeah. at, at the time of recording, it's I've got this uh, um, training that I've got to go through because... It's regulated, so at all, it's all protected and sure. what have you. We're members of ABTO as well, and that is also really, really strong. And we're part of the buying group that's got something like, I think it's two billion quid's worth of buying power, and you don't you don't get that off the back of a lorry, do you? Sure. But uh, no, I don't know. I mean, it, it, I, th I think I think the thing that that, that that keeps me up, if that's the right thing, is. It's it's a fear of failure. I think we've all got that, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. And when you we're just going back to what you said about you've got people around you that can't wait for you to do it. Other people, um, I have a lot of people say, well, "What what are you doing? Why are you doing it? What what about the risk? What if it fails?" So you never really. It's hard to get that support. There's always people that are going to say, oh, "Just stick to what you know. Stick to what you know. You don't know what you're doing." And that's right. But if you don't take that ch chance and take that step and give it a go you're never going to know and i i, I would well, not I want to be the guy that sits there and goes oh, i wish i'd done that well this is the this is the thing the irony is i haven't had that everyone i, I went to i got a good friend of mine based up in scotland he was one of the first persons i told about what i was doing and for a reason because he can be um are you sure do, do you know what i mean but in a supportive way he, he thought it was genius. He said, this is a great idea. He said, everyone I know goes away. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be wherever. You know, it can be a Norwegian cruise. You might want to see Northern Lights, skiing. There's so many different types. So there's so much product. But um, I, I, 
you know, I've been very lucky with the, the circle of people that I've got that have kind of been not just supportive, but quite eager to, to wait for me to get going. So they go, I mean, my son, um, I've, I've got three kids. So my, my middle one, my eldest son, he's booked an Airbnb. He's holding off on the flight because he's just going to book that through me. And I said, well, what, have you got insurance? Have you got car parking sorted out? Because I do all that as well. It's not just going into a thing and booking a, a trip. I can do everything. You pretty much um, do everything apart from packing the cases for you, right? More or less, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. But <laughs> <laughs> but, but the, the, the experience thing's interesting. I, I totally up the other day. I've, I've flown nearly 5 million miles. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, when, when you look at that, I'm, I, I should know what I'm doing because... Yeah. I've been to different types of airports and had all those experiences. Um, you know, if, if, if someone was to go, look, uh, we're, we're interested in Thailand, one of the islands, what would you suggest? First question, where are you looking at? Because if you like your sun, you've got to avoid the, the, the rainy season. Um, Koh Samui, which is on the, let me think, on the east side of Thailand. It's like a long strip, isn't it? It's yeah. an island on the east side. The very first place I went to in Thailand was there. We, we, we caught the end of the rainy season, but it didn't spoil our holiday. We was there for 10 nights, a couple of nights in, in Singapore, and it was idyllic. I loved it. We had a nice, quiet area, so I can talk about that. We went there in November. The following year, we went to Phuket, which is the other side of Thailand. It's on the west side, yeah. and we didn't have a drop of rain. We went the exact same dates, and then the third time that we went, we was up the road in Kaolak, same thing. No rain at all. It was brilliant. so we worked out that that side of the country misses the rainy season, and it is that stark. Yeah. And then the last time I was in Asia was Malaysia, and that was just as COVID hit us as we came back. We were a bit worried that we was going to get there at all. And <clears throat> excuse me, that that had didn't have a drop of rain at all, and that was in January. So I, I we've got no power over the weather, of course. No. I can give people ideas of my experiences in certain places that I've been to. Sure. You know, Europe, I've done virtually all of Europe. I think the only country I've not been to is, is Russia. But, you know, the, the, some of that's with work, some of that's with um, for, for pleasure. But again, with, with working scenarios, any companies listening to this, I can sort that too because corporate travel is just travel. If you want to book business class and you want um, – you know, a new flight that you may not know about, I, I, I may be able to help you with that. So that, sure. you know, my reach is, is, is huge. Yeah, that's good. So just before we wrap this up, is there any little bit, so someone like you who's looking to start up there, um, maybe their side hustle they've set up and they want to kind of push it a little bit further and take it to the next step, any little bits of um, advice or tips that you could kind of give to these people to give them a bit of encouragement support or you know watch out for this watch out for that yeah i i would say try not to listen to too many people get by all means get advice don't don't ever go into anything blind i i, I said this a lot when i was um talking about crypto all those years back and you will always get the sum that will love it and you'll always get the sum that will loathe it and you'll always get the majority that kind of sit in the middle yeah um, work out what your niche is and just concentrate on your strengths and just go with it because if you if you beat yourself up you'll end up it'll be like on a treadmill you'll, you'll, you won't be travelling anywhere but just keep some kind of little momentum and I think if you run with that and stay put and go with it you'll, you'll be fine um, if you need help the, the worst thing to do is not ask reach out there's always someone around yeah. whether it's whether it's on social media or someone that you know combination of both i mean that's kind of how you and i have met it, yeah you know pretty much yeah yeah something resonated i i, I reached out to you you replied and, and and that's it and guess what folks it works yeah and oddly enough we were chatting before we started recording your your background and my background are, are very very similar aren't they I, apart yeah. from the fact i haven't traveled as far as you have but you know we've, yeah, that's we've, it you know. That, that's it you know we, we 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 all we all do stuff you know I, I don't help people get to work each day that that's 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 just, that's another thing but for for you know if it's if it's a flying to work yeah i can i can certainly do that yeah. but yeah. it's something we all do 
we all live in a, in a, in a, in a home, you know, we're both ex construction as well. You know, we both, we go to a, a building. So the construction industry, the travel industry, they're very similar actually, because they're both vast, probably the biggest legal businesses you can be, you can be involved in. Um, maybe finance is the other one. Um, and th those three things are, are, are what we need to sort of get by plus to eat. So I've, 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 I've done supermarkets, I've done construction, um, I've done finance, um, so I've, I've done sort of uh, commercial finance years back, which was uh, linked to my insurance work. And now I'm doing the fourth one. And I think that's kind of the thing that's going to round me off as an individual. Yeah. Plus, with all that as well, there's so many transferable skills you can take with you. And I think that's important for people to realise as well. They might have had <clears throat> excuse me, a background in finance, but they might want to go out and do... I don't know a cake company, so they're thinking, well, how do what, what? But you've there are transferable skills that you can take yeah. with you that you might not be overly aware about. I think you know if you write down what you're good at and what what you've got, and then what do you need to do your side hustle to push that forward, you can you can move some of those into the next column to you know to then realize what you have actually got. You have got some strengths there to build a base from. You know. Well, the the other thing as well, I look at people like. Gordon Ramsay is a good example. He was a professional footballer. He's now one of the world's most famous chefs, and he's bloody good, you know. Yeah. I looked at Gary Vaynerchuk, massive on social media, and he's got a huge following on. He started with nothing. They, all Everybody does. You, you don't walk into an environment and go, oh, I've got 20,000 followers. It doesn't happen like that. You have to build on it. So one of my weaknesses is patience. Um. And I don't think business, I've got a lot of it, but I'm not I'm not a very patient person. <laughs> I, I'm the one that's waiting in the um in the departure lounge or or even before that, where you go for security. And I'm questioning why people aren't already got their buckles off because it's gonna set the alarm off. I just think, take it off. There's yeah, signs yeah. everywhere, it's yeah. everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> just before they go through the scanner, they start taking things off. Yeah. Or, 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 or don't put them on in the first place. I mean, most of the time when I travel, it's somewhere warm. I'll turn up at Gatwick uh, when, when we fly in a couple of weeks' time. I'll have a shirt and t t shorts, t shirt, flip flops. I don't yeah. care if it's minus one because I've got a little walk and then I'm in. Yeah, and yeah. that's it. It's minimal. I love it. But it's not everyone's cup of tea. No. Well, Dave, listen, um, appreciate you coming on. Enjoy your trip to Egypt. Um, good luck with the business. And I think if anything else that we can help you out with, then please do give us a shout. Um, in the meantime, everybody, thanks for listening. Uh, enjoy your day.